I'm smelling coffee and birds are singing just outside. Here comes your mercy streaming in with the morning light. My heart's facing waking up to your smile. Take good morning. Good morning and welcome back. Breakfast with the Bible, Psalm 6, verses 6 to 10. I am weary with my groaning all the night, make I my bed to swim. I water my couch with my tears. Mine eye is consumed because of grief, it waxeth old because of all mine enemies. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity, for the Lord hath heard the voice of my weeping. The Lord will hear, I'm sorry, the Lord hath heard. My supplication, the Lord will receive my prayer. Let all mine enemies be ashamed and sore vexed. Let them return and be ashamed suddenly. Okay, we continue with David's heaviness, David's depression, um, and his depression is clear in verse 6. I am weary with my groaning. All night I make my bed to swim. If, you ever, if you've ever cried all night, um, David is exhausted. Uh, and his imagery expresses, expresses how much he's, he's making his bed to swim. I mean, he's drawing this picture that that uh, his room is flooded with tears. If you, and like I said, if you've ever cried all night and cried from your soul, not you know it, 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 a deep, deep burden, you cried in such a way that your whole body was involved. You know how exhausted David was. You're weak. You're you your muscles are sore as if you like spent the whole day working out or something uh, your face is sore I mean just just this overwhelming um, exhaustion uh, in your body as if you, you've done something strenuous now we know that when Christ prayed in the garden that that it was explained that he he sweat drops of blood and you know it's it's amazing because they say that it's it's possible and i can't remember what they call it but this this grief this this weight um that you know and even crying drops of blood you know and i think maybe it's, it's possible it might have been crying maybe not sweating i don't now i don't recall for sure um, but you you can cry so much that your the your eyelids around your eyes will will get splotch, blotchy and, and red and spotted, and these blood vessels are popping, and you could actually hemorrhage through the skin and bleed bleed out from your from your eyelids and whatnot. And it's this 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 weighty soul-wrenching cry um, that is almost uncontrollable. And so verse 7 says, My eye was wasted away. And you cry so much that your face is puffy. Your eyes are almost closed because you've cried so hard. Um, around your eyes are swollen, and, 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 and then it's like you're squinting because it's just your, your face is so puffed from, from just weeping all night. I know, I know what that's like. And now this is the first verse in this psalm that David makes mention of his enemies. It says, um, My eye is consumed because of grief. It waxes old because of all mine enemies. So, again, it's, 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 it, it very well could be the combination of, of both David's struggle within as well as without. Again, we're not, we're not entirely sure. But verse 8 introduces to us, once again, David's confidence in God. And like I said yesterday, confidence we're going to see all the time. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity, for the Lord hath heard the voice of my weeping. God knew God, or David knew God heard him. It's, it's David conf, David's confidence, even in the midst of depression and trouble. Okay, this should bring us great encouragement. David is certain the Lord has heard. Carried into verse 9, 
The Lord hath heard my supplication. The Lord will receive my prayer. And that word supplication is specific prayers, not general, generalized, you know, bless the nation, um, bless my family, uh, but specific prayers, prayer for cancer in this particular individual or, um, you know, again, it's, it's specific. So David is, is praying specifically, and we've seen that so far. And David is certain. Again, the Lord has heard him. The Lord has. It is, it is clear he knows the Lord will receive his prayer. So this is, this is David, David's confidence again at work. Now, what we can draw from the Psalms that we've covered is that regardless of what he is going through, David has a great confidence in the Lord. And I've, and I've stressed that several times already. But it's, but it's of the utmost importance because sometimes we get in this situation where we're just troubled, we're depressed, we're weary, we're afraid, whatever it might be. And our, our first question is, God, what, what are you going to do? What, what's, and we get fearful. And we think, well, maybe God has left. Maybe God doesn't care. Maybe God has abandoned me. Maybe God isn't going to help. And, and we, we let our confidence fall. And again, few people have went through what David has gone through. Uh, and David's confidence in the midst of that is, is, is a great example and, and proof that it's possible, really. He ends his prayer with a plea to see his enemies dealt, dealt with justly by God. Let all mine enemies be ashamed and greatly troubled. Let them return and be ashamed suddenly. Again, he's not praying that they get destroyed. He's praying that God shows them their guilt, shows them their, their wrong, um, make them aware of their, of their error, and, and in, a, in a sense, David is asking that God shows them where they need um, repentance. And it's the same, it should be the same for us when we're praying for someone. And again, if you're praying for an enemy, it's hard to hate them. Okay, God, Jesus said, love your enemies. And if you're praying for somebody who is considered your enemy, you have a, you have a hard time hating someone you're praying for. And so you would, you would pray that they would, they would turn from their wicked ways. They would seek the Lord and, and repent and, and become a believer. I mean, that would be the greatest thing in the world. So, again, in the, in the midst of David's depression, in the midst of your depression, whether it's from within, from without, whatever, whatever's causing it, and maybe you don't even know, don't lose confidence in God. Don't, don't believe that you're sinning because you're depressed. Don't believe that, that you should be ashamed of it. But do as David did and take it to God. Say, hey, I am so depressed. I am so weak. Deliver me. And it, and it could be, deliver me from this depression. Show me whatever you want me to see. And... Uh, David's, David's confidence says, I know you will do what is right. So, thanks for watching. Uh, join me tomorrow as we start Psalm 7. Uh, that's a pretty, pretty in-depth one. It's got a pretty good backstory, and we'll cover that tomorrow. Uh, if you want to look ahead, go to 2 Samuel chapter 16 and, and read through it. Uh, again, it's, it's pretty, pretty wild. So, thanks for watching, and God bless.